and welcome to Event Head TV. Today I am joined by the beautiful Fee Mims from Fee Mims Photography and we are going to talk about photography at your events. Welcome Fee. Hi Jade, thank you for having me. Oh, thanks for coming. <laughs> I love working with you at my events because I know you're going to capture the most beautiful photos but can you please tell the people who are watching just a bit more about your business and the type of photography that you do? Sure and just so you know I love working with you too. <laughs> it's always fun. Um, I have been a photographer for 10 years. Um, I started, I did have a desk job for about seven years um, which my heart wasn't in and I Always, I didn't always want to be a photographer, but I always wanted to have a job that was meaningful, both for myself and for the people I worked with or for. And photography um, uh, took my interest and I decided to just go for it and studied and the story went on from there. Left my day job and built the business up. Um, and I just love it. I just, there's not a day when I don't love going out and capturing moments um, regardless of who the client is or what the type of job is. Um, and I also love about the job that I'm always learning. You, you never stop in my industry. Um, so I started off mainly as a wedding photographer. So I suppose that's an event really. I started <laughs> off as an event photographer. Um, and then I branched out um, after a few years into family portraiture. Um, and, and from that I went into more corporate headshots and uh, photographing businesses. So um, they're probably the three main arms of my, of my business. Well, it's nice and varied. It Keeps is. Keeps you on your toes. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Yeah, there, there's, you know, a lot of photographers just focus on one thing. Um, I don't try to do everything, but I do enjoy those three areas and I feel like they also overlap. They're really all portrait, um, portrait clients in one sense or another, I think. So, yeah, I love it. Yeah. Aw, and thinking about the photos that you take at events, what do you think it is that people love so much about looking at photos of events that they've either attended or that they've run themselves? Well, I think, I think everyone loves photos. People don't always love photos of themselves. Yeah. But they, <laughs> it's harder to convince them to like those ones. But people do love looking at photos. And if it's an event that you've run, well, I think firstly, putting on events is a lot of work. And you know that more than anyone. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of work, but it only lasts for a very short amount of time. And it's actually probably very sad for you to, at the end of the day, sometimes pull the sets down and go home and know that that's done. Um, there's probably a lot of satisfaction in that, but you know, once it's done, you don't see it again. So I suppose photos are um, a way of remembering the event, of documenting it so that you know it's not forgotten, um, reliving it as well. For people that have been to the event, they get to relive it, um, they get to share it with their friends, um, they get to, if they've um, connected with someone at the event, obviously um, social media sharing is great now because you can reconnect with people after the event. Um, so I think, yeah, they're the main reasons, yeah. And yeah. obviously also for the business that's run the event, um, it's a way of marketing to other potential clients, um, their work, what they do. This is the event I put on and, and it was awesome, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and I totally agree with you and I love looking at event photos, like getting them back is such a buzz. Mm. And I think for me personally, I really like the ones where people are smiling and they're connected with each other or yep. they're engaged with the speaker. Yep. Do you have any particular photos that you have a soft spot for at events? Like is there a particular style that yep. you like or tell yeah. me? <laughs> um, well, I think the Candon photos are great because you know when you get a, a great candid shot it's like yeah I got that shot and they didn't know <laughs> I took it. Um, but there's, there's two particular types of shots I love. I, I love detail shots. Um, I think details can often be overlooked, but they really set the tone and the feeling at a lot of events. Um, so I think capturing those little things, um, 
people really love that because when it's, it's not always expected in photos when you get them back, all those little things. I also love getting great crowd shots. So it might be an event where there's um, a fantastic speaker and it's obvious that you're going to take some great shots of that speaker. Um, but I think getting crowd shots, so showing um, people's reaction at the event, like whether they're laughing and having a good time or whether they're enthralled by that speaker, I love capturing their expressions on their face because that really shows to other people, um, I mean, that's quite authentic, like what the crowd experienced on the night. So I yeah. love those, those types of shots too. Oh, me too. <laughs> and events do evoke a lot of emotions. So depending on the event you're going, it's either fun and joyful and uplifting and inspiring and motivating. Mm. And sometimes it can be like, oh my gosh, wow, I feel like there's such a connection between me and the person who's speaking. Yeah. And seeing those photos of people's faces, taking it all in, it's yep. such a joy, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's a real buzz. Oh, and I, I still it. get a buzz when I look at those photos as well. As but well. that's because you take good photos. <laughs> Can I just say though, I also get a buzz when I get great shots of a speaker because believe it or not, sometimes it can be quite hard to get a great shot of someone when they're talking. No, I know. You've got to get them at I the know. right moment and it's like, oh, I've just got to take another one. Oh, it was the wrong time again. Oh, wrong moment. Yeah. So that's always like another, you know, I high five myself if I can get a great shot of a speaker with, um, you know, the right facial expression. No, <laughs> you do really well because I honestly am there with my camera and you'll see me at events and the speaker will come up and I'll be like, Ching, 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 ching. And then I'll go look through them and they'll be like, or like, or like making the weirdest faces because I've yep. just caught them at the wrong time. So that's a talent. <laughs> Waiting for the moment. Yeah, that's yep. it. A lot of my clients are business owners who are new to doing workshops and they haven't really thought about photography before. So they've never used a photographer for anything else in their business other than a few headshots for their photos. Yeah. What do you think is key in looking for a photographer that suits your style so that they can capture beautiful photos at your workshops and events? Yeah, it's a really good question. Um, I think I think the most important thing, because obviously photographers are, you know, it's, it's all about the visual, the most important thing is that you connect with their photos. Mm. So obviously, every good photographer should have a, a website. Um, so going online and looking at their portfolio of shots um, and you need to really connect with their photos because they could be a great event photographer but it might be a, a completely different style to the, the type of image you like or that reflects uh, what you want to reflect in your brand and your images and your events. So um, you have to connect with their images so feel something when you look at them. Um, and I think also um, you, you really need to connect with them. It's you, You're not working with them as closely as you would if you were a bride and groom, but you do need to work with them in that you need to be able to communicate really well with them and them with you. Um, so that could be just picking up the phone and mm. introducing yourself and saying, this is what I'm looking for, um, because you get a really good idea of people over the phone. Your instinct will tell you whether or not you get along. Maybe also even credentials, like um, they may be a great photographer, but, but do they photograph events? Um, or is it another reason that you've been sent to their website? Um, you know, if they're, if, if they're a great newborn photographer, they may not necessarily be familiar with photographing events and there are sort of different skills involved. Yeah, but you can use things like testimonials, reading their testimonials on their, on their website. Um, obviously, it's my industry. Um, uses a lot of recommendations, word of mouth. So if you've got word of mouth, that's always quite good too. Oh, all of my <laughs> suppliers are word of mouth. Yeah. Yeah, I just find that it makes it easier rather than trawling through the internet looking for people. Um, word of mouth is just king, isn't it? Yeah, and I think it's very hard to sift through everything, everyone that's online. And I know there are a gazillion photographers. <laughs> And everyone's website looks great because everyone has their best work up there. So yeah, it's it's word of mouth from someone who you trust is just gold. Yeah. You know at my events, I like to have a brief or a checklist of photos that we want to capture because I really feel like it's important for everybody to be on the same page. 
Do you believe that it's important for clients to collaborate with their photographer just to ensure that they're getting the outcomes they want at the end of the day? Absolutely, and that's one of the reasons I love working with you because <laughs> you're so organised. There's never any surprises and you let me know everything that's happening on the day or the night and that does make my job so much easier and it would make any photographer's job easier. Um, I think it's really it's really important to give them as much information as possible. So, you know, what are the most important photos to you? Um, what are the priorities on the day? Um, any venue information you can give them? Um, yeah, I mean, just collaborate with them as much as you can. Just so, I mean, the more you collaborate, the more you're going to ensure they give you what you want, so the, the type of shots you want um, and in the right style for you. So definitely don't hold back. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I like to hear, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I think also, I mean, if you give them um, a list of what you want them to do, it, it gives them more confidence as well because they'll then go out, they'll, they'll get those shots for you and then any time they have left over they can then use their creative freedom mm. to go and maybe get something that you didn't expect of them or that you wouldn't have thought of. So yeah, I think you know knowing that you're getting the right shots is really good and then going a bit above and beyond that to you know see what else you can get on the days. You know you can do that without worrying whether or not you've got the ones they want. It sounds like perfection, doesn't it? <laughs> it does to me. I'm such an event nerd. I'm like, oh, that sounds dreamy. <laughs> yeah. So to wrap up, what are your top tips for anybody who wants to hold a workshop or an event of their own in working with their photographer? Good question. So, top tips, um, similar to what we were just talking about, um, giving your photographer as much information as possible, so letting them know exactly what you want so they'll get the shots you want on the day. Copyright and usage, um, that's often something that people just don't think to ask about and generally it's not an issue but it's always good to know, um, to let the photographer know how you want to use the images, just to make sure there's going to be no surprises at the end. Um, you obviously will want to use them for your own business, um, but you may want to share them with um, people at the event. Um, if you've got a speaker at the event, you may want to pass them on to the speaker. Um, obviously have the ability to use them online for social media. So just um, making sure that's fine with the photographer as well and that there's no little hidden copyright things that you need to know about there. Delivery expectations. Um, this is a big one for me because I think, um, like everyone, photographers can be very busy and um, letting them know exactly when you'd like the images by is quite important. Um, obviously today, um, you know, everyone likes things turned around quite quickly. Um, but you may want to have some images immediately for social media, media sharing, um, but you may not necessarily need them all. So you may want to say to your photographer, um, look, can shoot me um, a handful of images in the next 24 or 48 hours, that would be great, but then the rest of them can come in a week's time, or you may not need them for two weeks. So I think letting them know that upfront is really helpful for them. I love that um, one. I do that, because you want the instant you know, yeah. social media share, but the album can come later. Yeah, mm. and I think also um, people aren't always aware of um, how long the editing can take with photos. Mm. Um, it's not as simple as taking the shots and then sticking the card in your computer and emailing them away. We always like to make them look beautiful first. Um, so yeah, just taking account of that time and, and letting them know so they can schedule it in and make sure they get it to you when they want. So. Um, and yeah, just as much, um, getting back to as much information as possible um, in terms of the venue and what it's going to look like on the day, um, lighting's another one, so whether it's um, daytime or nighttime and uh, exactly the sort of photos you want so they know whether or not they're going to need to bring extra lights, extra lights or gear in. Um, yeah, I think they're the things I can think of off the top of my head. <laughs> the only other thing I'm going to put in there is time to set up the lenses. Oh, yes. Yeah, because sometimes yep. people say, okay, arrive at 6.30, but the event starts at 6.30 yes. and you need a little time yes. to prepare no, for that one. you're spot on. So sending through a run sheet, but making sure you include in that 
um, not the start time of the event, but the start time where you want the photographer to arrive. Yeah. Because yeah. also I think um, the great thing about an event is getting that set up shot before everyone walks in the door. And if you're not there in time, you completely miss that. So, and you know, again, all that work you've put into setting it up and making sure it looks amazing, you want to capture that before everyone walks in and you can't see it anymore. So. I know. And the beautiful team photos yes. beforehand. Yep. And they're my favourite. Yep. And if you ever think to yourself, I'll get that later, uh-uh. No. Never happens. Never. Never They're happens. out the door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or you're too tired or you forget or yeah. Oh, well, that is so helpful. <laughs> and I actually learnt a lot. I thought I knew everything about oh, event photography. I don't. I don't. You so. know a lot. You know a lot. <laughs> but thank you so much for coming here and sharing your wisdom with us today. And for anybody wanting to look at Fee's beautiful work and connect with her, you can go to www.feemimsphotography.com.au. Thanks, Fee. Thank you, Jay.